outside Kimberly High School, the site for tonight's Fox Valley Association boys basketball matchup between the visiting Fond du Lac Cardinals and the host Kimberly Papermakers. I'm Ricardo Arguello, part of the USA Today Network Wisconsin digital live stream team. Hanging out as always with Brett Christofferson and bringing you those high definition shots, Jim Rosendick, as well as the secret weapon who shall remain nameless. Our four man crew here, uh, all, all part of USA Today Network Wisconsin and really excited to bring you this uh, FBA boys hoop matchup between the league leading and bit surprising league leading Fond du Lac Cardinals. And uh, now Brett, we were here not too long ago watching Kimberly beat Hortonville. Last Friday. Last Friday. This is an interesting matchup because we're getting to see the league leaders. Been wanting to see Fond du Lac. What a turnaround. A four-win team last year, Ricardo. All of a sudden, they, the Fond du Lac Cardinals are ranked sixth in the state, 10-1 and one in the Fox Valley Association, 14-3 and three overall. I believe riding an 11-game winning streak on top of that. So congratulations to Nick Ford. As we'll talk about Nick and, and how he's kind of resurrecting this program, but no doubt the surprise team in the FEA this season. And a chance, really, if they can pull out another victory, make it 12 in a row, Ricardo, to really take firm command here of the Fox Valley Association Championship race before we even hit February. Meanwhile, Kimberly, though, Ricardo, playing some good basketball. Uh, five of their last six uh, games uh, the, the papermakers have won and, and, and doing it right now still without the services of Seth Myron, their leading scorer, who I can see is still out under the basket there in the white sweatshirt, so he won't be playing tonight. Hopefully he can be get back on the floor soon, but that's their leading score. But it's kind of a by committee now, right? Uh, who can step up and hit some big shots, and, and the different guys are, are stepping up and filling roles and, and really playing good basketball under John Myron. So this is going to be very interesting. Two very good uh, teams that are ascending and right now playing their best basketball of the season. I think we're in for a good one tonight, folks. Again, Kimberly and Fond du Lac here at Jack with the Corp. We'll uh, get to know these teams a little bit more deeper here uh, as I will give some info on Kimberly and then Brett will follow with Fond du Lac. Again, Brett puts together these notes every week, so thank you, Brett. Uh, well, what about Kimberly? Well, they're 9-5 and five coming in overall, 7-4 and four in the Fox Valley Association. Winners of two straight, and as Brett mentioned, five of their last six are coming off that hard-fought 55-53 win over Appleton East on Tuesday in the FAA matchup here at Kimberly. Bryson Beath. He led the way with 18 points on 6 of 12 shooting. He also knocked down a pair of threes. Thomas Myers also scored in double figures as he's finished with 16 points on 6 of 7 shooting. He also included uh, three pointers and three assists. Now Nathan Wilds added seven points while Jack Stotts was credited with five assists. And now on the season, Seth Myron, who uh, Brett talked about, he's out with an injury. He's Kimberly's top scorer at 17.1 points a game. He's shooting 52% overall and 47% from distance. His 29 triples are a team best. Myers next at 10.2 points a game. He's shooting 40% overall, 39% from three-point range, and his 22 triples are second on the team. Michael Asman is, is a third in scoring at 6.6 .6 points a game. He is also the team's top re rebounder at 4.7 a game, and Myron is next at an even four a game. Myers, 3.4 assists per game lead the way in that category. Now as a team, Papermaker is shooting 46% overall, 37% from three-point range, and 69% from the free throw line. Opponents are shooting 44% overall and 31% from three point range. The papermakers are also out rebounding their opponents 25.1 to 21.6 a game and averaging 6.9 steals a game. And overall they're averaging 58.9 points a game and allowing 55.8. Their next matchups against West Alice Hale, that's uh, tomorrow in a non-conference matchup that's part of the Warhawk Invitational at Germantown, tip up there set for 5.30 p.m. Brett, what can you tell me about the Fondi Cardinals? Yeah, Fond du Lac, Ricardo, as I said, 14-3 and three overall, 10-1 and one in the Fox Valley Association. Winners of 11 straight. The Cardinals ranked number six in Division I in this week's Associated Press and with Sports.net State Coaches polls. And they're coming off a 73-72 <coughs> victory, hard-fought victory over Oshkosh West on Tuesday. Oshkosh West, Ricardo, playing some good ball. They just, they just beat Kakana last yes, night. they did. The Wildcats. So that was uh, Tuesday that was a Fox Valley Association matchup down the road at Oshkosh. Uh, Jamaria Dalton, one of the top uh, scorers here in the conference uh, for Fond du Lac. He had another big night as he finished with 20 points on 6 of 13 shooting. He also finished with 7 rebounds and 5 assists. Went 8 of 9 from the free throw line. Will Bratz uh, chipped in with 12 points. He finished a perfect 6 of 6 from the field. Knocked down all 3 of his 
three-point attempts. And then Steven Schreider and Colton Blank added 11 points apiece. They each, uh, each hit three threes in the win overall. Uh, Fond du Lac went 13 of 22 from three-point range and 11 of 15 from the stripe. On the season, Dalton is the team's top scorer at 20.8 points per game. That ranks third in the FBA. Of course, we saw the league's top two scores last night when we streamed that uh, Hortonville-Oshkosh North game. Uh, Stephen Clark and Xavion uh, Mitchell for Oshkosh North, the leading scorers in the league, but Jamaria Dalton, number three, at 20.8 points per game. He's shooting an even 50% from the floor, 40% from three-point range, uh, where he has hit 19 threes. He's also shooting at a 73% clip from the free throw line. Ricardo, we're going to talk also as the game goes on about Fond du Lac. They can light it up from distance. Yes. Actually one of the top three-point shooting teams in the state. We'll talk about that as the game goes on. Uh, looking uh, again at scoring, a blank is next at 9.9 .9 points. He's shooting 48% overall, 46% from distance, and 71% from the line. Schreider, the quarterback, right? Uh, he is third in scoring at nine points per game. He has hit a team-high 43s and is shooting 41% from beyond the arc. And don't forget about Riker Johnson and Rocky Berfnecht. Uh, they're averaging 8.4 and 7.2 points per game, respectively. Dalton, the Cardinals' top rebounder at 4.8 per game, and then Dalton's 2.2 assists per game also leads the team in that category. Looking at the, the team stats, Fond du Lac shooting 48% overall, 40% from three-point range, and 71% from the free throw line. Uh, opponents are shooting 48% overall, 30% from three-point land, and the Cardinals also out-rebounding their opponents 24.5 to 23.6 per game and averaging five steals per game. And then looking at the scoreboard, Fond du Lac averaging 67.8 points per game and allowing 58 7. Up next for the Cards. They're home against Appleton East uh, Tuesday night. Fox Valley Association matchup. Tip-off is set for 7.30 p.m. Second of our back-to-back -back varsity game of the week. Boys basketball live streams this week. Got a nice slate of games lined up for next week. Uh, a boys game on Tuesday night. And then we're going to check out uh, a really big girls game. Saturday night Saturday night to next Saturday night, so stay tuned for that. We'll lay that all out for you as the night goes on as well. But, boy, Ricardo, what a game last night that we saw. Hortonville taking down Oshkosh North on the, what, what 25, 20, I don't know, 26 feet maybe for August He was out there. He drained it from the, from the volleyball stripe right in front of the logo uh, for an 87-84 victory right before the buzzer sounded, and that's a big win for the Polar Bears, uh, Kind of a log jam when you look at kind of the middle of, of the league right now and get the standings out uh, here in a second. But, yeah, you look at, again, Fond du Lac 10-1 and in the FBA, now Oshkosh North 8-4. and four. Fond du Lac with a three-game lead in the loss column, really in, in firm control of, of the conference, aren't they? And then you look at Kimberly 7-4, then Hortonville and Kakana at 7-5 and five in the league. Nina's at 6-4. and four. Uh, so, yeah, I mean, it's exactly kind of as we predicted, Brett. <laughs> it's, it's all over the place. Tonight's uh, FBA games Appleton East at Appleton West. The Patriots taking on the Terrors. Rosie's got some interest in that one. And uh, Nina at Appleton North, in addition to tonight's game. And of course, Oshkosh West, as we mentioned, taking down Kakana last night. 68 65, an upset. Wildcats coming back to win that one. And then. As I mentioned, uh, Hortonville with the 87-84 victory last night over Oshkosh North. The uh, three-pointer by August Maurer. He finishes with 29 points to lead the Polar Bears. You can uh, see a replay both of the stream and of the shot on postcrescent.com. Yes, you can. Rosie took some time out to uh, edit a clip for us, and uh, we could... Uh Show everyone uh, what an amazing shot that was. Heck of a game. Remember, uh, Hortonville had a 19-point lead in the second half, and Oshkosh North tied it on that beautiful reverse by Xavion Mitchell. Figured it was going to go into overtime. I'll tell you what, Brett, uh, you know, for August Maurer, as he tells that story years and years later, that <laughs> shot gets farther and farther <laughs> he's, out. He's going to be like uh, <laughs> 70 feet away from, yeah. the, from the basket. Why not? Uh, that was a heck of a shot. It was nothing but net, too. Yeah, it was beautiful. It wasn't, didn't rim around or bank in or anything. 
Well, we'll uh, get to the starting lineups here in a moment, but first our national anthem. I want to thank our sponsors. First, Cellcom. Let Cellcom help you accomplish your resolution to save with their largest sign-on bonus ever. Get $500 when activating a new smartphone line. Plus, make the switch to Cellcom and get up to an additional $650 per line. Visit Cellcom.com slash save for details. And Cooney's Embroidery and Sportswear. Get your team, club, or business name out there with Cooney's. They customize products specifically to fit their customers' needs. Family-owned for 20 years, they have the skills and experience to customize your apparel and spread the word about your organization. Delivery services available. Contact them today at 920-731-0922 or send them an email at cooneys, C-O-O-N-E-Y-S, 0922 at sbcglobal.net. Getting ready for the starting lineups for both teams. Second you know, minutes away from the start of tonight's game. Your starting lineup for Fond du Lac: uh, six foot two senior Steven Schreider, six foot two senior Colton Blank, five foot eleven sophomore Eli Zimmerman, six foot two senior Jamaria Dalton, and a six foot six senior Will Bratz. That's your starting lineup for the Fond du Lac Cardinals. Again, league leading Fond du Lac Cardinals. And for Kimberly, starting lineup: Bryson Veith, the six foot junior guard. Jack Stott, six foot two senior guard. Thomas Myers, six foot one uh, junior point guard. Nathan Wild, a six foot five junior forward. And Michael Asman, six foot seven senior forward. That's your starting lineup for Kimberly as they get introduced. Brett, it's filled in a little bit. Uh, yeah, I yeah. know you were concerned that maybe. I wasn't concerned, Ricardo. I was complaining. I was complaining. complaining. All right, let's, let's, let's call it what it was. All you right. were whining a you little bit. You don't have to cover for me. I was like, come on, it's a Friday night. Uh, you got the top team in the league here, the sixth ranked Cardinals. Kimberly playing good basketball. Wondering where the crowd is. Of course, I, I believe the girls are probably down in Fond du Lac right tonight. So one of those things that we like to complain about, in addition to just our normal complaining is uh, I don't like the fact that the FDA splits them up. Yeah. Last week we were here for Hortonville. It was a boy-girl doubleheader. The girls played first, Kimberly and Hortonville, followed by the boys game, which we streamed. I think Nina and Hortonville are going to gonna do something like that in the next couple weeks. Uh, mm. I believe the boys will tip off first, followed by the girls for the nightcap. So I like that much better. I do, too. Again, Fond du Lac coach Nick Ford. Former Cardinal athlete. And then uh, for Kimberly, it's John Murphy. 
the great coach. Uh, won some state titles with Seymour. Really looking forward to seeing Jamaria Dalton play. He's going to uh, tip it off uh, against the six foot seven Michael Asman. Dalton listed at 6'2", but a heck of an athlete, one of the leading scorers in the conference, and he wins a tip, Cardinals, with the basketball to start. Kimberly in the man-to-man -man defense. Zimmerman, Bratz, misses. Misses again, got two rebounds. Red filling up the stats. Yeah, I was going to say, patting those offensive rebounds. <laughs> Dalton losing the handle, loose ball, and what do we have here? Going to say over and back. Nick Ford doesn't agree with that call. No, he doesn't. I think he's probably thinking uh, no possession right at that time, and, but a turnover, Kimberly with the basketball. Against Hortonville, we saw Myers come through with a big game. Well, we saw Sam Dudick as well, mentioned by Murphy in my story. Beautiful pass from Stotts to Veith. Good team ball, and uh, right out of the shoot, paper makers with the early bucket. And another turnover, Schreider loses the handle there, and right up, and you know, Asman with the offensive rebound, little baby hook, no good, and uh, nice rebound by Bratz. That was Thomas Myers, looked like he was going to Maybe lay it in, but another turnover, Ricardo. Three possessions, three turnovers. Not the way Nick Ford wanted the Fond du Lac Cardinals to start this one. Good nice. feed, yeah. Mm -hmm. This time from, I think, Beef to Asman. And a couple buckets inside for the Papermakers, who, again, playing really good basketball. Their, their best stretch of the season, without a doubt. Wrecker Johnson getting set to check in for Fond du Lac. Brotts. And they're going to call the foul on number 12, Nathan Wilds. So that'll put uh, Will Bratz. Brett, just for a second there, the I, thought, I thought that official kind of looked like our friend from uh, Nina. You know who I'm talking about. Where am I looking at? Right down, right down by the baseline or, or by the scores table there. Our friend from Nina, I, I'm, I'm, I'm drawing a blank. Oh, really? He does. He has the sultry voice that you hear at the state tournaments. Oh, J yeah, Jim Strick, you're saying <laughs> that? <looks Yeah. laughs> Stotts with the miss. I was going to say the official kind of looks like uh, Jeff Machik. Uh, oh, that too, The, the yeah. Kakana okay. wrestling coach. So I was thinking for a second. We're just cycling through all the bald-headed <laughs> folks. <laughs> Is he doing a double do? Maybe it's Joel Christopher. Yeah, there we go. Former... Uh, Colleague at USA Today Network Wisconsin in the Post Crescent. 4-1 early lead for the paper makers as we look at our cell comp, Cooney's Embroidery Sportswear scoreboard. There's a three, good. That's Colton Blank. First field goal of the night ties this one up. Good awareness from Dalton, Brett, on that one. Defense collapsed on him. He found the open shooter in the perimeter. No miscommunication between Stotts and uh, Thomas Myers turnover. So four turnovers for Fond du Lac, Brett. Four of the first six possessions. See Nick Ford talking things over with uh, Will Bratz, who checks out. Going over the game plan, I'm sure. Seems like any time Dalton now with the basketball, he's going to draw a lot of attention, averaging a shade over 20 points per game. Third leading score in the Fox Valley Association. And uh, Jack Stotts draws that assignment tonight, at least here in the early stages. Good patience by Fond du Lac. Dalton trying to work his way. Nice feed inside. Little hook can't get it to fall. <laughs> nice pass. And uh, Rock Riker Johnson, the 6'4 junior, just couldn't convert. Fourteen thirty left here in the first half. Just underway here at Jack Whippet Court. All tied up at four. Fond du Lac lead leading Cardinals and the Kimberly Papermakers. Good 
Good patience by Kimberly Ricardo, but look at they're all moving. There's a little cut to the basket. Good feed to Myers from Stotts. Well, there you saw all that patience paying off, Brett, with the nice open lane. Well, I wouldn't say open, but uh, it was less contested than everything else. Blank going into some traffic. Schreider now. Zimmerman. Had a pretty good move was uh, number four, Eli Zimmerman, the sophomore. Instead, a foul against Thomas Myers, uh, the paper makers. So two team fouls for Kimberly. 6-4 lead for the paper makers. Yeah, last time these two teams met back on December 9th at Fond du Lac, uh, Cardinals beating Kimberly 58-44. Dalton high off the glass and gets it to fall. Just kind of pushed his way in, Ricardo, and using that window. First bucket of the night for Jamaria Dalton. Yeah, Steven Schreider, he had uh, a game-high 19 points to pace the Cardinals in that earlier matchup. Scoop shot by Myers is good. He's got four. Dalton had 18 points in that earlier game. Colton Blank finished with 14 points and six rebounds, and now you're going to get uh, a travel against Dalton. That's the fifth turnover for Fond du Lac, Brett. Surprising that they're only down by two points. None for Kimberly that I have. Seth Myron, he had 16 points to lead the papermakers uh, back on December 9th. Fond du Lac outscored Kimberly 27-9 from three-point range, 13-3 to from the free throw line. We'll talk about that great three-point shooting. There's Beath. He's going to let it fly. No good. We've already seen one triple by from blank for the Cardinals. Well, they like to shoot it, Brett. Curious to see what they eventually end up with. I'm sure that's a uh, big concern for the Kimberly defense. Yeah, point of emphasis, right? Closing out on those three-point shooters. But they've, they've got a bunch. And a tough shot. Can't get it to fall. That's number 32, Riker Johnson, going to the line, and that's going to be the second on Nathan Wiles. Yeah, we see uh, Asman getting ready to check back in for Kimberly. Riker Johnson, six foot four junior, will shoot two. Johnson, his first point of the night, looking to make it two of two from the line. Good. Fond du Lac, two of three from the stripe so far. Good free throw shooting team. Now extending that pressure. As Myers goes behind the back, splits the defenders. No, they're going to get a foul. Almost yeah. a turnover. Yeah, they're going to call Bratz, Eli Bratz on that, six foot two sophomore. You'd see what uh, Myers was trying to do and split that uh, pair of Fondi defenders. We watch Kimberly Ricardo, watch this offense uh, always moving, right? No, nothing stagnant about it. Maybe see if you can get uh, an aggressive Fond du Lac defense to overplay, get a little backdoor uh, action, but instead Beef just kind of probes the lane and a uh, little teardrop, and he's got four points and a two-point lead again for the papermakers. Yeah, Fond du Lac, Ricardo, uh, coming into tonight, uh, 153 three-pointers made. That's the third most among teams in Division One, ninth most in all divisions. And uh, check this out, uh, Steven Schreider at team high 43s. Again, this is coming into tonight. Colton Blank with 26, now he's 27. Eli Zimmerman, 22. Jamaria Dalton, 19. Rocky Barf uh, Barfneck with 16. Riker Johnson with 12, and Eli Broth with 10. That's a lot of players in double figures in three-point makes. Mikey Wilds with the foul, and... Uh that's Brat, six foot two sophomore, will be shooting a pair of free throws. So that stresses the defense, doesn't it? it certainly uh, does. Who do you try to 
shut down. Usually teams may have a, a couple good shooters, but they have a team full of good shooters. You start closing out, and uh, Final Act can maybe rotate that basketball pretty fast, faster than what the defense can rotate. Maybe some open uh, open shooters tonight. Yeah, and then, you know, when you have that uh, ability to be such a force from distance, Brett, that sets up guys like Dalton to be a playmaker and find uh, a little more space uh, to the basket. Absolutely. So see how the, the paper makers play these shooters. So far, just one three-point basket by Blank, and uh, Eli Bratz missing the second. So Kimberly holds on to a one-point lead as we... Look at our cell comp, Cooney's Embroidery and Sportswear scoreboard. Look at Dalton getting in on Sam Dudek there. You can see very aggressive style of defense. Veith, little pass, nice feed to number five, Mikey Wilds. And you're seeing uh, Ricardo a few of their baskets already with uh, assisting on those makes. And, and again, playing good team ball and Constantly moving despite uh, that harassing defense, not panicking. Dalton. Far from it all, loses the ball. Oh, is that Dudek who maybe got his hand on the ball? A little two on one, left hand. Dudek, though, another opportunity. I think that's Myers who's got six. Couple different uh, paper makers there with some offensive rebounds. And finally, Myers is the one who's able to put it through. Five point advantage, largest lead of the night for Kimberly. Looked like Johnson thought about uh, pulling the trigger at the top. Final lap will reset. There's a kick out, three pointer. Good look by Eli Zimmerman with the miss, though Asman comes down with it. Under 10 minutes here in the first half. Fox Valley Association uh, matchup between Kimberly and Fond du Lac. Oh, and tough take, and Myers is going to go to the line. No fear in attacking the rim. Eli Bratz now picks up his second. He has both of Fond du Lac's fouls, and Thomas Myers with six early points looking to add to that total and add to the Kimberly lead. Dalton losing control, and is that going to be another turnover? I think we're going to have a jump ball. And that is another turnover for Fond du Lac. Mm. Brett, I have them down for seven. Too many. Way too many. And uh, that turnover margin, by the way, seven to nothing. Well, that explains a, a six-point deficit right now for the Cardinals, doesn't it? Uh, Got to tighten that up. But credit to Kimberly. And look at Veith doing some work and just slices through the lane. He's got six points. And an eight-point edge. So Myers with seven, Veith with six. And now Dalton trying to get to work off the glass, no good. And Mikey Wilds, number five with the rebound. Now Myers bringing it up the floor. Got to be encouraging for uh, Coach Murphy how well the papermakers are playing. Remember, they're playing without their leading scorer. Seth Myron, second in rebounds as well. Good pull up there, but uh, couldn't get it to fall. Rocky Barfneck, number 20 with the rebound. and Loose ball, Fond du Lac will keep it. And Veith will get whistled for the foul. That's going to be five team fouls already against Kimberly. Yeah, looking at the papermakers so far, uh, uh, five of uh, their last six games uh, have been victories. Uh, Appleton West, 71-46. Appleton East, 75-51. Appleton North, 61-35. Lost to Kakana. That was a big one, 70-46. Then back-to-back -back wins, 63-59 over Hortonville. That was last Friday. We streamed that game. And then uh, Tuesday night against Appleton East, 55-53. Brett, right now, uh, Kimberly's on a 7-0 run. But the pressure's being amped up a bit for Fond du Lac. 
But so far, Kimberly really handling it well. You can hear John Murphy down there keep saying, move it, move it. And that's what this uh, offense is doing. Everybody's just moving. Meyer's going to let it fly from the corner. Good look. Can't get it to fall. Bratz pulls it down. And let's see if the Cardinals can start chipping away at this deficit. Down eight. Again, coming into tonight, the uh, league leader in the Fox Valley Association. The big fella nails it. Whoa. How about that? Will Bratz. He's got four and a much needed hoop right there. Bratz grilling up a three, huh, my friend? There you go. I was waiting for that. Now Dudek, he's going to let it fly from the wing. Short and loose ball stays with the paper makers. And John Murphy wants a full timeout. Nice rebound by uh, Mikey Wilds. Yeah, he's a good little player, that Mikey Wilds, you know. Younger brother of uh, Nathan, six foot two guard. Got a great deal on a digital subscription, Ricardo, the Post Crescent, Fond du Lac Reporter, any of our sites, right? Uh, for the next three months, you can get all the benefits included with a digital subscription for just $1. What a deal, huh? That includes full access on your desktop, tablet, and mobile devices every day, exclusive subscriber newsletters, the E edition. Uh, you can get access to our USA Today Sports Plus app. Learn more details and sign up for a digital subscription, postcrescent.com slash subscribe, fdlreporter.com slash subscribe, any of our sites slash subscribe. It's that easy, and uh, you can't go wrong. Can't Three months for one dollar. Give Three us months. a shot. Give it a look, huh? Three months and a dollar. And our next live stream is, uh, Ricardo, we got back-to-back -back games next week, too, or I should say two games. We'll be back at it next Tuesday night. Bay Conference boys match up as second-ranked Xavier host West appear. Hawks and Phantoms are battling for a league championship. Live coverage will tip off at approximately 7 o'clock from Torchy Clark Gym. Torchy Clark. We're also set to stream Saturday's, next Saturday's, big non-conference girls matchup between Hortonville and Notre Dame. Polar Bears ranked number two in Division One, while the back-to-back -back state champ Tritons, number one in Division Two. That should be a good battle as well. That's an earlier game. Uh, we're going to go live about 1.15 p.m. because it's a 1.30 tip. Next Saturday. Looking forward to that. Busy stretch for uh, the stream team. I love it. Seven minutes left here in the first half. Again, 17 12 lead Again, for Kimberly. And there's make that, that cutter, right? And Beef. Make that 19 12. Thomas Myers with the assist and eight points for Beef. Dalton, long There you bomb. go. Get him going, right? He's got five, and that's the third triple for the Cardinals. Again, one of the top three-point shooting teams in Division I and the entire state. Here in the 6'10 six, six, mark, and a foul. Looks like that's going to be on Will Bratz, but three shot foul if that's the case. Yeah, Mikey Wilds, he's got one bucket, but three free throws coming on the foul by Bratz. Jack Whippet Court here inside Kimberly High School. Fond du Lac and Kimberly. Fox Valley Association battle and Dalton with the rebound. So Wilds one of three. The Dal or Dalton just backing his way in. Good look. Just couldn't get it to fall. Smooth player. Under six minutes left in the first half. Be interesting to see where Dalton ends up. Asman deep three, no good. Rebound to Schreider. 
Strider, one of the top quarterbacks in the state last year. Yeah. Well, Fond du Lac uh, once or twice uh, last year. Loose ball, gonna be chased down. Well, where's it gonna go? And who's it gonna go to? Fond du Lac will keep it. Riker Johnson doing a good job of like uh, shielding off Wilds. Hey, Fond du Lac, Ricardo, I was checking this out. Chasing its first Fox Valley Association Boys Basketball Championship since the 2000-2001 season. Cardinals uh, shared the conference title that season with Oshkosh West, both finishing 17-1. and one. Wow. In pretty good defense there in Dalton, just again using that glass. Now that wasn't the Diener era, was it? Or I mean, I mean Travis Diener. Uh, th that might have been after. Maybe yeah, it was, maybe it was just a shade after. I think Myers will get called for the foul. 16 fouls Might now. have been the Drake or Drew years. Myers now with two fouls. But, yeah, I looked at both uh, the Cardinals and Wildcats that year finished 17-1. and one. And that uh, capped a, a really a very successful stretch for Fond du Lac that saw it win or shared nine league championships over an 11-season span. Fond du Lac won or shared six straight league crowns from 92-93 through 97-98. So... It's been a long time since Fond du Lac has been able to celebrate a boys basketball championship. Will it be this season? Pretty good shape right now as far as records go. Only down three in this one as well. And Dalton going to work here. And they're going to get a push off on Dalton. He can't believe it. Kind of extended that arm he though did. maybe a little bit. He did. But that counts as another turnover. Eight now for Fond du Lac. I don't have any for Kimberly. Fonny's defense overall playing a lot better. The second half of the first half here. They are right now on an 8-3 run. Bucket from Asman. Four points for Asman. Whoa, look at that reverse. Mm. Barfin had really shown a lot of athleticism there. Brett kind of tiptoeing along uh, the baseline there. Fond du Lac, Ricardo. Well, I was just going to say, uh, doing a good job. Keeping uh, pace. Who hit that last bucket for uh, Kimberly? Uh, that was number five, Wilds. Wilds again. So, okay, he's got five. And, oh, boy, turnover, and there's a two. Oh, no! Riker Johnson going for the two-handed flush. Couldn't get it to fall. He gets the offensive rebound. A little reverse. Can't get it to fall. And Pendleton brings it down. Oh, you know that Kimberly student section's loving that. Well, and y y you can't uh, heckle until you can actually go up there and do that yourself, right? And there we have the first turnover by Kimberly. Until you can show me that you can put one down with two hands, you have nothing to say about that. I agree. Only thing we're dunking is Oreos and milk, right, Brett? <laughs> That's about it, yeah. I mm. could never dunk anything. I, at my peak, I could touch the rim. Oh, come on. I could. I need to see visual proof of that. Why? <laughs> they didn't have iPhones back, yeah, in the, back in the olden days. They didn't even have cameras back when you played. <laughs> I wouldn't call what I I'm going to call, what I played was pickup ball. That was about You're it. You're gonna have to have the Flintstones have that bird kind of etch it out on I, stone or something. I, <laughs> I ate my Flintstone vitamins. <laughs> I'm not saying I could grab the rim. I'm saying I could oh, raise the rim. Okay. I couldn't like go up and touch it with the top of your fingers. That you counts, man. That again. counts. And we're gonna get a jump ball here. Well, I could I could tr I could touch the net. There you go. Andy Hurley uh, checking in, our friend Andy. He said, oh, 2000-2001 uh, was Travis Diener's senior season. So okay. Thank you, Andy. Must have been during the Butch years at Appleton West as well. Then that's when uh, yeah, the Appleton West won back-to-back -back championships, and I think right after that when Brian Butch uh -huh. was uh, coming through. 
Oh boy, good steal by Pendleton. Uh, one on one, lays it in. And his first basket of the night. Seven point lead for the Papermakers with just two minutes to go. Oh, nice feed inside. Again, you see what happened there? Oh, nice. Oh, again, I think you can see a little frustration from Riker Johnson, the 6'4 yeah, junior, just can't get it to get uh, get through the hoop. You know what I always preach, Brett? When he got the ball down low, he put the ball on the ground. That allowed the guards to come and grab at it, and that affected his shot. If he would just put it right back up, I think we'd have a better chance at making a shot. Good move by Asner with the left. I, I, that's just something I always, when it comes to the big guys, keep the ball up high. Dots going up and oh, uh, no, here, they are letting <laughs> them play kind of back and forth. Little disjointed uh, last few minutes of this first half. Schreider thought about it. Kick out. There's a three from the wing. That was a good look by Johnson. Just a little off target on that shot and with under a minute to play. How's Kimberly going to handle this? Again, you can hear John Murphy yelling, move it, move it. And there's Pendleton left hand in the finish. Pendleton with four points and a nine point lead. Largest of the night for the paper makers. Let's see if Final Act, I think, will set up for one final shot. Back to back baskets there for Pendleton, junior guard. And timeout now by Nick Ford. I'm sure it's because he wants to get Dalton in there, as well as Will Brotts. Yeah, good look at Nick Ford there, Ricardo. Uh, fourth season leading the Cardinals. Uh, as you mentioned, a, a Fond du Lac alum played for uh, the Cardinals. Also played collegiately, uh, kind of doing a little research on him at Cardinal Stritch, where he was okay. a member of the 2012-2013 NAIA Division II National Championship team. Oh, wow. Now he took over a program that was 2-22 back in 2018-19. Uh, Since then, he has guided the Cardinals to 42 wins, uh, including a 16-9 showing in 2020-21. And again, a major turnaround, 14-3 coming into tonight after last season finishing 4-22. So a complete 180, but uh, Nick Ford doing a nice job uh, restoring this program, Ricardo. Restoring it back to its prominence. Here's Dalton, nearing five seconds left in the first yeah, half. Yeah, going against Stotts, kick out. Good defense oh, by Pendleton, and they didn't get a shot off. And you can see uh, here the Kimberly crowd appreciative of that defensive effort. Nothing doing for the Cardinals, and that's how we close out this first half. Halftime here at Jack Whippet Court. Quick look at our Cellcom and Cooney's Embroidery and Sportswear scoreboard shows the papermakers leading the Cardinals. Talk more about tonight's game and uh, what we have coming up digitally at USA Today Network Wisconsin after this short break. the top of the 222 building on College Avenue in downtown Appleton. It's Varsity Roundtable. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Ricardo Arguello.
Welcome back to Jack Whippick Court. And again, as we look at our Cellcom and Cooney's Embroidery and Sportswear scoreboard, Papermakers up 28 to 19 over the league leading Fond du Lac Cardinals here in this Friday night. Fox Valley Association boys basketball game. Again, uh, shout out to our sponsors, Cellcom. Get $500 when activating a new smartphone line, plus make the switch to Cellcom and get up to an additional $650 per line. Visit cellcom.com slash save for details. And Cooney's Embroidery and Sportswear, they have the skills and experience to customize your apparel and spread the word about your organization. Contact them today at 920-731-0922 or send them an email, Cooney's, again, C-O-O-N-E-Y-S, 0922 at sbcglobal.net. Also want to shout out our, uh, Ricardo, our USA Today Sports Plus app. That's the new sports app that puts the fans first. Get the latest scores, stats, and standings and enjoy interactive experiences with our award-winning sports writers. Download USA Today Sports Plus from the Apple uh, or Google Play stores today. USA Today Sports Plus, fan harder. So what's on your mind, Ricardo? What do you want to talk about at halftime here? Well, I think, first off, the thing that first comes to mind, oh, are you talking about the game here? Yeah. Well, the turnovers for Fond du Lac. I, I thought it was a very disjointed half for them, uh, and I think it was a very underwhelming half for them. I think they can play a lot better, and they will play a lot better in the second half. I think Nick Ford's going to probably have a little discussion with them at halftime because I don't think that's a Fond du Lac no. team that's leading the league right there. What we saw was a team – Again, a little careless with the ball. And then that kind of permeated throughout uh, the way their play was. and the, They weren't very efficient. As uh, Rosie's all geeked up because they're playing a little fog he hat. He got his request. Oh, yeah, he? he's got the fog hat shirt on. That a boy. <laughs> now, fog hat, are they a one-hit wonder? What a, No, I thought they – okay. I told, I told Rosie that I, when, when he requested I was like, oh, yeah, that's a really good song. You always kind of forget about these good songs. Are you going to accuse him of being old like you accused me yesterday of being bit, old? A little bit, but I'll tell you what. I like this song because it was featured in one of my favorite movies, uh, Dazed and Confused. So I do like this song. It's a, it's a, it's, a, it's good. Do you like this song, Sam? Eh, you don't care. <laughs> what kind of stuff do you like, Sam? You like the Drake, right? A little Drake. Little little Uzi Vert. I don't know. I'm just rattling off names. I don't know anything. But, uh, Brett, yeah, I mean, I think Fondi's going to come on and play much better in the second half. I expect this, again, to be a one-possession game towards the end. I really do believe that. Now, Kimberly, Brett, on the opposite on the spectrum, they had one turnover, I believe, in the first half. That is remarkable for the papermakers. So the key for them is to kind of keep that intensity up, keep that efficiency up, and, again, playing so well without – that's got to be so encouraging to play so well without Seth Myron, Brett. Got to be exciting when he's finally healthy and able to come back, right? Uh, yeah, all of a sudden, you're looking at a team that's going to be pretty dangerous here. And, and I talked to Thomas Myers uh, after their win over Hornville. He said that. He goes, when we get Seth back, you know, we're going to be really, you know, the, the, the whole, all the puzzles back, right? All the pieces are back. Meantime, getting these guys back together. Now, interesting, Nick Ford, the uh, Fond du back out on the floor already. Yeah. So it was a quick conversation. Yep. Maybe uh, let, let's let's work on those uh, free throws and work on those right. three pointers. It looks like I meant those three pointers. Yeah. So, uh, it, Brett, it, real quick. Yeah. To promo the roundtable, we had a great roundtable this past Wednesday with St. Mary Catholic boys and girls basketball teams on the big show. Uh, we're hoping to have uh, Kakana Wrestling on this Wednesday. I haven't gotten any confirmations yet, Brett. But uh, best place to find out: Facebook.com/slash Varsity Roundtable. But you know, we're also looking at some other things too. We're you know some teams that we'd like to have on. Uh, other teams that we like to have on that are doing well. Uh, you know, we've mentioned possibly having the Pier boys. Uh, we have to see if we can make that happen. Uh, but, you know, Brett, they are the number one ranked team. They are number state. one. and uh, They absolutely are. The clear number one. And, uh, you know, I would like to have Kakana girls basketball on. You know, they're kind of going through that injury phase here. I kind of want to get them a little bit more healthy. Then we'll have them on. Maybe they'll feel a little better about being on the show. But do we have no shortage of great team Xavier boys basketball? We'll see them Tuesday night. Yeah. Yeah, some, some definitely some good uh, freedom girls basketball. Looking to get them a uh, uh, varsity FBL. game of the week stream. I'm looking to get them together. Yeah, uh, they got a big game coming up, so definitely I have already reached out trying to get that scheduled. Little Shoot Boys uh, leading the Northeastern Conference. Now they, they lost to Wrightstown the other night, but still 
FBL boys as well, Ricardo. It seems to be made kind of right now a two-team race in the NEC. I don't know if I'm a believer yet in Little Shoot. I'm going to wait a little bit on them. Yeah, fair enough. Yeah, that's absolutely fair enough. We'll kind of see how it goes. Uh, but they, I know they have a big game later in February with the, with the Foxes. It's a, it's, a, it's a potential game we yeah. want to stream as well. But I'll tell you what. I said the same thing for their football team, and they made me a believer. Got to Very the state, solid football team. State yeah. quarterfinals, yeah. Underrated uh, athlete, athletic classes they have right now over at Little Shit. I think they've surprised some people. Kimberly back out on the floor as well. First half scoring for the Papermakers. Veith with eight. Mikey Wilds with five. Myers with seven. Asman with four. Pendleton with four. As for Fondelac, Blank with three. Dalton with seven. Eli Bratz with one, Barfnecht with two, Johnson with two, and Will Bratz with four. Looking at uh, the first half, one, two, three triples for Fond du Lac. Again, coming into tonight, 153, now 156. But uh, coming into tonight, uh, ranked as the third most uh, three-point makes among teams in D1, ninth most in all divisions. See how the second half uh, plays out. But right now, Kimberly trying to make it six wins in its last seven games. Kind of making that climb up the Fox Valley Association standings. Boy, it's going to be an interesting February. We're about ready to turn the calendar, right? I don't know if Mother Nature agrees with that yet. Now it's supposed to get bitter cold. But still, it's good to get January out of the way going to February. Now we hit the stretch runs of these conferences and really start kind of seeing what we can piece together as far as how the playoffs are going to look, the brackets. And uh, I can tell everybody we're going to be streaming all the playoff games uh, that we can. Again, uh, girls, regionals, and sectionals, boys, regionals, and sectionals. Maybe, Rosie, we'll do one of those back-to-backs like we did. like a we, what we, we used to do like a, a boys regional final. Girls sectional. In the afternoon and a girls sectional final at night, I think is how we did. No, no, it was the opposite. It was girls sectional final was usually during the day and then a boys regional yeah. final was that night yeah and on, on that saturday so we'll i'll see and i'll do my best but usually at that time i'm wrestling boy you're wrestling oh. boy maybe we can get mike sherry to uh pinch hit but he sometimes uh, depending on what is that during the individual wrestling term or the team he might be covering state hockey oh that's right well we'll, we'll, we'll figure it out uh, if, if as long as you got you rosie and the secret weapon right here that's right see how it all uh, shakes out but looking forward to seeing what the uh, the brackets are going to look like as Rosie doing a little dancing now. Yeah, this is that uh, real, you know, slow ride really gets to be really uh, frenetic there at the end. It's not so slow anymore. No. Kimberly will open the second half with the basketball. That's uh, what Mike DeCook, the PA announcer, always honoring our requests. I asked for a little U2 tonight. Let's see if he honors my request. Maybe he don't like you. And maybe he doesn't. Not too many people do. You hit the nail of the head on that one. <laughs> <laughs> I've accepted that fact long ago. <laughs> Grumpy Brett. Yep. Has been. Nice job back and keeping that pivot foot again. Nice little hook shot, little baby hook. Just can't get that one to drop. Mary Dalton now with the basketball. See if he can start to heat up here in the second half. And they're going to call, I think, Jack Stotts. So first foul of the half goes against the Papermakers and Jack Stotts. Low scoring game here at Jack Whippet Court. Dalton trying to work. Now he kicks out to Schreider. Good. And that's what that's what Dalton can do, Ricardo, right? That's good patience, not forcing it. Stotts defending very well and being the facilitator. Finds Schreider wide open from the wing and nothing but net. See what Fondy can do to build off that three-point basket. They're down seven point or six points, I'm sorry. 17-minute mark just underway here in the second half. That was a good pass from Myers to Nathan Wilds. Again, Myers doing good work going against Dalton. And again, a lot of assists for this Kimberly team. Schreider feeling it. 
And uh, a chance to reset. Second chance points here, knocked away. And Kimberly with it. Another turnover, Ricardo. Yeah, that's nine total for the game. I have them four unofficially, of course. I think Dalton thought he was fouled on that. Again, I think with, with how Fond du Lac can play defensively, I think either off screens or just a little, little jab cut or something, I think you can get some backdoor stuff. Almost a steal there. And a good pass. Asman just can't get it to fall. He's had some looks in the paint. A little frustration on his face right now. A little backdoor there with good defense. Three-pointer. Rims oh. out for Eli Zimmerman, and it just kind of scoots out. Yeah, what he, are they going to call yeah, here? They, they said that, I want to say they said Schreider kind of booted it. Oh, may, okay, maybe it was, uh, they're keeping it with Fond du Lac, though, so maybe they thought a Kimberly player tried to. Nice bounce pass. Oh, good kick out. Again, knocking him down there is Colton Blank, his second three of the night in two quick triples this half. Good patience by Fond du Lac, Ricardo. Again, passing out of trouble, passing out of some traffic defensively. And, and taking advantage of second chance opportunities. And not as just well. that, they, they they could have gone for maybe a mid range shot, but then they kicked it out for a three point basket. Brett took the gamble and won. Well, again, though, that's the strength of this offense, right? At least statistically coming in. They're a great three point shooting team. And right now, I think that was probably a, a point of emphasis at halftime. Hey, we got to get back to doing what we do best. You get those openings, let it fly, and they've got a bunch of shooters. Beef, tough take, and he gets it to fall. That's going to go against, I believe, Will Bratz. And Veith now an opportunity for the three-point play. Veith now with ten points. Leading score for the papermaker so far tonight. Six foot Veith going against the 6'6 six, six Brats. 33 25. Kimberly leads by eight here in the second half. Dalton covered by Wilds. And he'll go to the line for two. Dalton with seven points tonight. Dalton with seven first half points. Uh, first trip to the free throw line for the senior. Looking at Dalton, he enters uh, tonight's game. Ricardo, uh, 1,173 points that was coming into tonight. He eclipsed the 1,000 point mark earlier on the season, four 30 plus games on the season, six 20 plus games. He had a career high 50 points last season. That was in a loss to Kakana. 16 of 26 wow. that night, knocked down seven three. So he's a scorer, but be interesting to see where he ends up playing at the next level. Eight points for Dalton. Schreider. Uh, oh, knocked away by that was, Mikey yeah, Wild, I think. The six two sophomore. Looked like Schreider had a little lay-in, and uh, Mikey Wilds coming in. How about that? Nathan Wilds with a triple. Just like that, 10-point lead for Kimberly Brett. It was down to five points at one point in the second half for Kokana, or for Kokana, for Kimberly over uh, Fond du Lac. Tough shot, staying with it, no good. That was, again, uh, Riker Johnson just can't get it to fall inside the paper makers a chance to extend this 10 point lead. Kimberly Ricardo doing a nice job of kind of weathering that little early storm if you will. Right. Almost knocked away by Dalton on Veith. But again if Fondi's going to start hitting these threes they can come back in a hurry. It's a matter about getting these stops on defense if Almost Riker Johnson. There, yeah. Possession will stay with Kimberly. Hey, got to give a shout-out to Jackson Pavletsky. Remember him? Oh, sure. Having a great, great season so far. Yeah, his first year collegially at Walford. Last year's Fox Valley Association Player of the Year. What was he? About a 30-point-per-game average. 
And uh, currently second on the team in scoring at 14.5 points per game. The former papermaker standout shooting 47% for the Terriers. He's taken to the D1 college level very nicely. Just nicely, right? 41% from three. He started all 22 games for uh, Wofford. Of course, Jeremy Lorenz from Brilliant is going to be uh, a Wofford Terrier too next year as a turnover. Pavletsky, six 20-plus point games so far this season, and he's coming off back-to-back -back games in which he scored 25 points against Furman and 21 points against Chattanooga. So, uh, Jackson, if you're watching, hope all is well with you and Wofford Land, and congratulations on the early success. Congratulations on being somewhere where it's nice and warm. Yeah, that, that's South Carolina, right? Yep. Yeah. We miss uh, watching him play. We do. Three attempt. Good. There you go, Riker Johnson. His first field goal. He's got five points. And uh, kind of struggling to knock him down in the paint. So the 6'4 junior steps out and knocks it down from the corner. Look at that pass and finish. Left hand by Mikey Wilds. Myers with the assist. Seems like any time Fondy hits a shot, Ricardo Kimberly answers. And yeah, I they haven't had to have a, they haven't, uh, Fond du Lac hasn't had a prolonged run of any kind yet. Again, I would love to see the assist total after this one because a lot of made baskets coming off of great passes from the paper makers. Dalton, I thought he was going to let it fly. A little spin move off the glass. Stays with it and finishes. So quick. Timeout, is that on Fond du Lac? It looks like a, is that going to be a flare? They're trying to get a full or a 30. It's going to be a 30-second timeout. 38-31 uh, papermakers on top as we look at our Cellcom Coonies embroidery and sportswear scoreboard. A little Fleetwood Mac. That's not my request, but I'll, I'll take it. I like Fleetwood Mac. I'll take it. Again, uh, back at it Tuesday night for a Bay Conference boys game. Xavier and West appear. Hawks and Phantoms uh, in a battle for the league title. Hawks. Undef or, uh, ranked number two, but they just lost the other night to Seymour. I saw that. Seymour uh, on a four-game winning streak, so the Thunder playing a better basketball. Of course, John Murphy talked about all his great success. 33 seasons at the helm uh, with Seymour. Now the Kimberly coach, his second season, uh, led the Thunder to three straight, three, I should say, state championships, 12 state tournament, uh, tournament appearances, over 600 career wins. And uh, Fond du Lac trying to create some pressure here defensively, extending that a little bit. And uh, Kimberly doing a nice job to break it and set up its offense. Yeah, former Seymour guard. Uh, not Phil Rombach, it was the other kid. Callahan uh, Skogman. There's Myers with a bucket. He is a big time uh, He's an actor now, right? Hollywood star. He's on uh, a couple of Netflix shows. They're kind of like fantasy uh, that, that, that is so popular now. I forgot the name of it, Shadow and Bone or something like that. It's uh, based off a book series, and uh, he plays a pivotal character on there. Good guy. I haven't talked to him in a while, but boy, that's that's a big fan base of Shadow and Bone. I'll tell you that right now. Though they're they're very uh, they're Star Trek ish, if you if you if you get what I'm saying mm -hmm. with their fans. Oh, almost a uh, little baseline uh, cut. Just uh, couldn't find the basketball. Kimberly has it. Oh, almost inside. They're gonna say yeah, it off was of Fond du Lac. It definitely was off of Brat. Yeah. Uh, Coach Murphy, boy, you think some of the names that have come through his program, though. You, you mentioned Skogman and Rombach and oh, uh, Dakota Oski and, of course, Sandy Cohen yep. and, and, and Paul Kraft way back when. He played, uh, didn't he play at GB? I, th I think he played at Clay he did, yeah. Green Bay. And, which is an incredible run of success at Seymour now in his second season with uh, Kimberly. Still seems weird to see him here. So used to seeing him at the Thunderdome. But uh, there's Beath. Rims Not just out. that, I must say, uh, he looks great. I mean, he looks like he's about 35 years old. <laughs> yeah, he doesn't age, doesn't he? No. And, and, and that's tough to do in this business. He's found the fountain of youth I somewhere. I guess so. But, yeah, Seymour taking down uh, Xavier. That was a surprise. And Thunder, again, four straight victories. I think they're about 
even uh, as far as record-wise in the Bay. And we're gonna get an offensive foul on Schreider. Right now, Kimberly's just out playing Fond du Lac in every aspect, Brett. They're quicker to the ball. They're getting those calls. They're playing defense just a little better. Offensively, they're much more smooth, more efficient. Really impressive performance here, Brett. Again, doing it without Seth Myron. Yeah, like we talked about at halftime, what's, what's this going to look like when Myron is back? But uh, almost a steal by Riker Johnson. Stay with Kimberly. wonder how, uh, how much longer until Myron's good to go. Well, he, he was off crutches, right? We didn't yeah, see him on I, and crutches. Yeah, he wasn't wearing a walking boot or anything, so hopefully soon. And we're going to get a foul. I think Bryson Veith will go to the line. Veith having a good night. 11, make it 12 points, two of two from the free throw line, back up to a 10 point game. What's the largest lead for Kimberly? Oh, let me see. Is it, is it 10 or is it 11? It's 28 19 at the half. It was. I think it was the halftime score, Brett. So, largest lead now at 11 points yes. for the Papermakers. Again, Fond du Lac trimmed it down to five. And again, sloppy with the ball. I think another timeout for uh, Fond du Lac. They're going to have to take a full. Nothing really going right for Fond no. tonight, Brett. They've been, and I think a lot of the credit needs to go to Kimberly's defense, to be quite honest. There you go, Brett. You there happy? There we go. <laughs> Playing your U2. I, I love it. I love uh, Mike. He does a great job with the music. And uh, we've got to introduce the the young crowd to this the old time the oldies Ricardo I'm sure these kids nowadays think yeah it's a pretty good song what is that what is that I don't mind you too I'm a big fan of their earlier work like Sunday Bloody Sunday yeah that's, that's good um, how about the, the Joshua Tree all yeah I mean up to the Joshua Tree I guess it, they were more hit and miss for me just for me as time went on but I was never a really big fan of you two other than a couple songs Octung Baby the, this yep. comes from the album that's a good album Anyway, back to basketball. No, Brett, you need to broaden your music horizon. You no. need to get some current stuff. No. Get uh, right, Rosie. He needs to hear some Taylor, I, I'm trying Taylor to, Swift. No, I'm trying to broaden my horizon by listening to more country. Oh, okay. Well, how about Chris Stapleton? He's good I, at the Brothers Osborne. That's pretty good I, stuff. I don't know who you're talking about. He's got right a little there. little rock edge. Hey, to I like uh, the nitty gritty dirt band. <laughs> you and me go fishing in the dark. How's that? Zach Brown Band. I like them. Too. I don't know who that is. Easy. There's a turnover. Here comes a, a fast break oh! and a two-handed slam. Mikey Wilds. And another assist. Was that Myers? There's Dalton quickly down and another bucket for the senior. Woo! Wilds showing some ups there, my friend. Can only dream of doing that. No way my tight hamstrings can handle that. A little turn around and that's in this time. Nathan Wilds, all seven of his points tonight coming in the second half. Wilds Brothers. Sounds like a country band. It does. Nice hesitation. Oh, rims out for that's Rocky kind of, Barf. Uh, yeah, it was, it was a good look. Uh, kind of the night for Fonda. Absolutely. Even bunnies are not finding the hole. Pendleton going to work. No offensive rebound off the glass is Nathan Wilds again. Nine points all this half. Can't call a timeout or can you right now? Right now it's 15 points. Kimberly firmly in control. Yeah, this is not what I expected as far as uh, how this game. Look at that. In and out of the rim. Not to, uh, that's not a slight on Kimberly by any stretch. I just figured this was going to be a kind of a barn burner, but right now Kimberly in complete command. <laughs> you see Nate Wilds like, give me the ball, brother. Oh, and Dalton should wow. have called for foul there. <laughs> the official kind of shaking his head. And Fond du Lac somehow keeps it. They need to get this under control. The <laughs> officials are letting this kind of get out of hand. Bounce pass. And uh, final act reset, but the uh, time for the Cardinals to make a run or that 11-game winning streak is going to be snapped. Let's see if uh, Fondi, again, great three-point shooting team, 
See if they can uh, get something going here with seven and a half minutes to go from the top. There you go. That's Riker, Riker Johnson again, his second triple both this half. Doesn't take long, Ricardo, with no. that three-point basket, right? That three-point stripe to cut the deficit down. Now, Kimberly, I think if you're, you're I was just going to say maybe patience. <laughs> but that was a pretty good look for okay. Nathan Wilds. Just couldn't get it to fall. But, again, Barfneck, a little hesitation, needs help. From the corner, rims out for Eli Zimmerman. That was a great look. That's about the third ball that's gone in and come back out, Brett. Rims unkind for the Fond du Lac Cardinals tonight. Beath, little short, stays with it, and can't get that one to fall. Beath again off the glass, oh, no good, man. and that's going to stay with Kimberly. You can see D uh, J uh, Dalton there kind of clapping his hands, keeping his guys engaged. He knows it's not over yet with 6.41 to play. Dalton with 12 points for the Cardinals. Oh, a nice pass Down from Dudek. Beautiful. Left hand by Myers, no good, but that was pretty. Definitely was. Barfnick working on Dudek. Again, little hesitation. And Strider will give it to Dalton as uh, the Cardinals reset again. Dalton going hard to the glass. He's fouled. No! He's obviously frustrated. He thought he was fouled, Brett. Uh, several Kimberly defenders converged on him as he went to the hoop. And there's a foul on Fond du Lac. Will Bratz. Yeah, his third. Got a, uh, Ricardo, a, a, a message from my, my source. I, I'm not going to reveal my source, but saying that uh, the hope for Seth Myron maybe to return on Tuesday of this next week. Get him back into the lineup. Is a nice steal by Dalton. He's going one-on-one, -on -one, little Euro step, left hand, beautiful. That was, that pretty, was nice. That was pretty good defense, yeah. too, with that Euro step, and then uh, finishing with the left hand. You can see why uh, such an explosive player, 14 points now for Dalton. Down to a 10-point game. Myers, tough shot. My brittle knee every time I see those Euro steps. Oh, I know. Woo. Giannis, uh, good for that, right, with those long strides and foul against the papermakers. Still plenty of time left, only a 10-point game. I think there's going to be a timeout called by Murphy and Seymour. Oh, I almost said Seymour. <laughs> there you go. Uh, Murphy and Kimberly. He wants a full timeout, and I think that's a good timeout. Probably sensing a little bit of a momentum shift, yeah. right? And I think maybe something that uh, Murphy's going to talk about, we don't need to rush shots. No. We don't need to rush shots. Let's get back to kind of what we were doing, moving the offense. Everybody's screening, coming and off those cuts, and or I should say those, those, those um, picks, and uh, work kind of the offense. Don't force shots. And more importantly, take some time off that clock. Yeah, milk the clock a little bit when you're up 10. There's a good look at Coach John Murphy. Don't forget about that digital subscription, folks. We would like you to subscribe, uh, su subscribe right now, huh? Three months for one dollar, full digital access. Again, uh, access on your desktop, tablet, and mobile devices every day. Exclusive subscriber newsletters, the E edition, access to our USA Today Sports Plus app. Postgres.com/slash/subscribe. FDLreporter.com/slash/subscribe. But please. One dollar for three months. Give us a try, right, Ricardo? Absolutely. Dalton, tough off the glass, using a tough angle. And again, another offensive rebound. I thought Barfneck was going to take it. Instead, he's going to dribble. Nope, out to Schreiber, Sh uh, Schreider. Good defense, though, Ricardo. Looks like there's some openings uh, for those three-pointers, uh, three-point shooters, but Kimberly doing a good job of closing out on that stuff. And they're in five-minute mark and down 10 points. There's still time for Fondi to make that run. But that's not going to help a turnover. Nope, trying to feed Bratz underneath, but a Kimberly defender in the way. Now let's see uh, how Kimberly executes this offensively as Veith on the block. Trying to back his way in off the glass. No good. Good defense by, again, Barfneck, number 20, a six-foot junior. 
That's 10 uh, rebounds for Will Bratz, by the way, for Fond du Lac. And they're going to call Wilds for yeah, a foul. Yeah, that's going to be his third. Both teams with four fouls apiece. So uh, nobody in uh, crazy foul trouble yet. 439 to play. Feels like uh, now's the time, Ricardo, yeah. for the Cardinals to kind of make a move, right? Each possession becomes incredibly critical. Dalton, left hand. Wow. <laughs> I didn't think he had any chance of making that shot with that <laughs> angle and right. going up kind of uh, acrobatically. But using the back? Using back the, the, the square. Look at that. Oh, and boy. there's an answer by Nathan Wilds, his second three-pointer of the night. 12 points for Wilds. They have an answer for everything, does they, Kimberly. It seems like it. Right when uh, Dalton makes a great shot, you think that could maybe be the spark, and then uh, Kimberly comes down and, and Wilds with another triple. 406 left in the second half, 51-40 lead for Kimberly. They've led most of this game. 16 points for Dalton, 9 this half. I think it's got to run through him right now. And a good hook shot. Does he get the bounce? No. Will Bratz, again, a little baby hook in the paint. Some of that inside stuff, the, the great looks for the Cardinals, just can't get him to fall tonight. Kimberly's doing a good job against this pressure, too. Oh, that's a turnover for Kimberly. Yeah. Right, I only have them for four turnovers in this game. Myers trying to hit uh, Mikey Wilds, and a little, little too much on that fastball, maybe. 11-point advantage, Dalton. Gives it up, and Schreider at the top. Left hand for, that was huh. number two, Colton Blank again, some bunnies. <laughs> I mean, they're contested though, but uh, I, yeah. those are shots that I think they will tell you that we normally will knock down, right? Right, and that's at least the fifth or sixth time I've seen that happen, it's just, that's got to be frustrating for Fond du Lac uh, the off on the offensive end to see those shots go into the basket and then come right out. Now what do you do? A little under three minutes to play if you're Kimberly. Lead the clock. Yeah, just keep running your offense, right? Yeah, absolutely. Again, hearing John Murphy yelling move, move, almost to turnover. Good hands by Myers. And, uh, yeah, right now there's a foul on Dalton because uh, – they're going to want Kimberly going to the line here pretty soon. That's only the fifth team foul. Second team foul, second foul for uh, Dalton. Yeah. But with 2.42 to play, just take care of the basketball, make Fond du Lac come out and start fouling, and chance to cement this game at the free throw line. You really don't need to shoot the basketball even anymore, Ricardo. This is where the free throws come into effect, and I think Kimberly's a very good free throw shooting team. They're one away from the bonus. Yeah, 69% from the free throw line is Kimberly, but there's a turnover. Win tonight would put Kimberly at 10 victories on the season. And Dalton, again, using the beautiful. Boy, he's a finisher. He is. He's a finisher and uh, a heck of a player. Fun to watch him uh, do his thing. Dalton now with 18 points. And they're going to foul, so they're going to send Nathan Wilds to the free throw line. Seventh team foul, so one and one coming up for Wilds. Colton Blank whistled for that. First trip to the free throw line for Nathan Wilds. 12 points for Nathan, all coming this half, and nothing but net.
Good on both. You know, Ricardo, just looking at uh, Fond du Lac's team stats, averaging 67 points a game in uh, only 42 points tonight. Heck of an effort uh, defensively, but a lot of turnovers, a lot of empty trips. Three point opportunity by Will Bratz, no good. And what's the call here? It's against Kimberly. Wilds down low. 2.01 left in the second half, Brett. Possession will stay with Fond du Lac. Fourth on Mikey Wilds. Kick out, three point opportunity there for Colton Blank. He's got nine points all from distance. Three three point buckets, eight point game. Looks like Wilds going back to the free throw line. Fourth foul for Will Bratz. So Nathan Wilds again one and one, just uh, knocked down two free throws uh, a few moments ago and good again. So undervalued, I believe. Practice them, right? Yeah. Practice them. Free throws, they really can put you know, the final nail in the coffin in some of these games. Easy to practice and uh, you become a pretty good free throw shooter. You, you become a pretty good shooter at all in, in general and almost a turnover. Barfneck looking to, little hesitation there, nice job. And his uh, first bucket of this half. So that lead bread is now seven points with under 130 left. And that's Bratz. gonna be Bratz's fifth. Yes, I was just gonna say. So he's out. He exits with four points. Six foot six, six foot six senior. Not sure maybe that's uh, the guy that you want committing the foul, right? Ricardo, you want no. uh, a rebounder, a big body staying in the game, but instead uh, Nathan Wilde is gonna go back to the line where he's three of four. 15 points for Wilds. And uh, doing a good job from the line is Nathan Wilds. Good shooting from the free throw line. Wilds now with 17 points, back up to a nine point game. And that one is uh, airmailed to the stands. It's tough for Fond du Lac, that was obviously mental and a physical error. Blocking call, that's gonna go against Schreider. Fond du Lac fans don't agree with that call. That's going to be the 10th foul, so double bonus. Two free throws coming. See the official talking to Nick Ford. I think they had a, they had a good reason to question that call. It certainly looked like it could have been called a charge. Tough. That's, that's a bang bang, right? That's, yeah. that's always tough. I would never want to be an official, I'll tell you that. As Veith, again, uh, he is now four of four from the free throw line. Again, we saw this like we against uh, Hortonville, Brett. Uh, critical free throws on the stretch by Kimberly. Both teams last night I thought shot well from the stripe, Oshkosh North and Hortonville, but yeah. Uh, I'll have to add this up, especially the second half, what uh, Kimberly has done from the free throw line. There's two for Veith. Veith now with 15 points. 10 of 11, Ricardo, this half at the stripe for the papermakers. That's how you get it done, right? Absolutely. Dalton, tough shot again off the glass. Boy, amazing how he can work those angles. 
and uh, knock those shots down using the glass. There's another example for the young kids out there. Use that backboard. It's your friend. Full timeout for Nick Ford and the Cardinals. Trying to uh, devise a scheme that can uh, get you nine quick points within 55.7 yeah. seconds. Speaking of uh, guys that know how to finish and use that glass, uh, how about Giannis tonight? 41 points and 12 rebounds as That's the Bucks beat the Pacers. <laughs> 141 to 131. Well, how did Halliburton do? I'll check. Tyrese Halliburton, of course, having a, a monster season for the Indiana Pacers, the Oshkosh North standout. Let's see. Uh, he did not play. Oh, okay. Did not play tonight. Not too long ago, Ricardo uh, Tyrese Halliburton was on the Varsity Roundtable show, and there he is, uh, should be an all-star with the Indiana Pacers. Maybe during the all-star break we can revisit that show and maybe post that as a, what, what do you call it, a roundtable classic, Maybe Rosie? we should get uh, Tyrese back on the show at some point. Oh, that'd be, that'd be nice. Huh? Maybe uh, a a once their season's done. He'd do that for us. I hope. He's, a, he's, a, he's, a, he's grounded, down to earth. He knows he, he's, he's – Tyrese is never going to be a, a, a kid that ever forgets where he came from, right? Uh, he's rooted in, in northeast Wisconsin and Oshkosh, so good you kid, hope. good family. I agree with that. Remember those Oshkosh North kids coming off the state championship? Sitting uh, front row at the Northeast Wisconsin High School Sports Awards show that season. That was the year we had Aaron Rodgers as our special special guest, and Coach Weber and Tyrese and Quincy Anderson, those guys. And they wanted to be uh, as close to number 12 as possible. Now it seems everyone wants to be as distant as possible from old number 12. Everybody but the Jets fans, apparently, yeah. right? Uh, Way it's way it's sounding now. He's all but pretty much traded to the New York Jets. We'll, well see. The Hackett signing as offensive corner certainly leads to speculation, does it not? It does. Or maybe there's going to be a trade between the Jets and the Broncos for Russell Wilson. <laughs> yeah, I don't think that'll work <laughs> no? with, okay. with Nathaniel Hackett there, right? Uh, that didn't seem to be a very <laughs> good partnership, as Thomas Myers. What do you think? I, I think I think uh, Rogers is going to be traded. I think we're going to talk about this more in our uh, R and B show okay. for next well, week. When is that coming up? Monday. Well, hopefully, if, if, if it's all about Rosie. Rosie, whenever you can find the well, time, let's do it. I think I think you have a lot of opinions to say on that, Brett. Well, we kind of talked about it uh, at the end of our Clubhouse Live show. Oh, oh, Myers oh, took oh, a oh. tough shot, or uh, Dalton took a <laughs> tough shot. Saw his face, uh, his neck snap back. Yeah, hopefully he's all right. Looks like he is. Well, Rosie and I have a we have a live stream check at Xavier High School on Monday at eleven. Okay. So then when we get back to the office. Yeah, let's do it. We could do it right after that. Does that work for you, Rosie? Yeah. Maybe not. Oh. Simon at ten thirty. Uh oh. Well, we'll talk about it. Yeah, Rosie can get back to us. I just like to get it done as early in the week as possible. Yes, I'm fine with Monday afternoon. Brett, if that works for you as well. Well, yeah, I'll be in the office. As that's another foul, and Veith will go back to the line. Brett, again, what, what's their free throws so far? Uh, let me check here. I have them uh, 13 for 15 this half. Okay. Make sure to mention that in the roundup story. Veith is perfect from the line tonight. 14 for 16 now. He's 6 of 6 uh, this half. Pay attention, folks. That's how you win games. Yes, absolutely. Hitting your free throws. And look at that. Veith again. Love to see it. Think about the number of points just from the line tonight. Again, wow, crazy 
how Dalton can get in there and finish like that. Dalton now with 24 points. 17 this half. So Myers at the free throw line. Yeah, Myers two of two this half, three of four from the line. Myers with 11 points, matching his uniform number, and again, knocking him down. That's impressive. Uh, they're just not missing from the stripe. And nothing but net again. Great free throw shooting. Yeah, 17 for 19. Schreider going to let one fly, can't get it to fall, and they're going to say no foul, and that is how this game comes to an end. Fond du Lac sees its 11-game winning streak snap. Kimberly stays red hot with a 65-53 victory over the league-leading Cardinals, and uh, Ricardo, again, give him a follow on Twitter at Ricardo DeLeon, D-E-L-I-A-N. He's updating his... Yep, Twitter account right now with tonight's final. But I uh, always like to ask Ricardo his thoughts on uh, on the game. And yeah, Kimberly well, playing, uh, that's what, six wins in its last seven games. They had to play well to snap that win streak. And I think Fondi was probably due for a little bit of a down game. That's what I think of when I see Fond du Lac tonight. This isn't the Fond du Lac team, Brett, that, that we're used to seeing, that the folks are used to seeing. You know, you're going to have an off game here and there. I think this was maybe a little bit of an off game. But don't take any credit away from Kimberly. That defense forced them, Brett, to, to be, uh, what do you call it, inefficient. Way too many turnovers in the first half for Fond du Lac. And then conversely, Kimberly took care of the ball. Uh, I think they finished with five turnovers. I had them for anyway overall. That's a low number, Brett, uh, for a high school boys basketball game, five turnovers. Uh, and that's what Kimberly had. And then again, just great production from the papermakers uh, from, the, from the roster. Without Seth Myron, this this looks like a Kimberly team that's kind of finding their way, Brett, once they get Myron back next week. Hey, why not Kimberly, right, once you get the postseason going on? That's a team that maybe some teams aren't going to want to play. No, I wouldn't think so, right? Uh, a lot of guys really kind of, it, it's, it's starting to come together, isn't it? Uh, after kind of a shaky start, it's really starting to come together for the papermakers, different guys. What I like about the Kimberly aspect is a lot of different guys have the ability to hurt you right now, and yes. now you add what DeMyron can do, yeah, all of a sudden Kimberly becomes a pretty dangerous team. And I really loved how they defended tonight. Uh, closed out well on those threes. Now, uh, Final Act, though, is going to say, hey, we had some shots, especially inside, they had and many. They, they missed uh, yes. some, some bunnies that normally they would uh, they would hit. I, you know, obviously Fond du Lac sees that 11-game winning streak snap, but again, just the second loss in conference play. Uh, Oshkosh North and Kimberly with four conference losses, so they still hold a two-game lead in the loss column as far as uh, the Fox Valley Association race. But looking at Ricardo at uh, Fond du Lac's schedule coming up, they still have Appleton East. They have Nina and Oshkosh North and Hortonville all in a row. Wow. So that's a bit of a gauntlet. And then they close at Kakana, and you don't know what you're going to get with Kakana. They had been playing very well until losing uh, last night to Oshkosh West. So a very tricky schedule for the Cardinals coming up. So the conference race still up in the air, and it's... Uh, Really, anybody's uh, championship when you took a look at a handful of these teams. It's gonna, it, but but all that kind of turmoil, Brett. That's good for us. That's what we like, we got, right? We got games that are going to be counting when it comes to the conference standings and the conference finish. Absolutely. So looking forward to that. Hey, we'll see you what next Tuesday. Next Tuesday at Torchy right. Clark. Looking forward to uh, heading back. It's been a few years since we've been to Torchy, so Xavier certainly uh, deserves it, being uh, the second-ranked team in Division Three. Brilliant number one. Talk about a collision course maybe in the postseason, and I don't know how that's going to shake out, if that's going to be a regional final, or hopefully that's more in the sectionals. So we'll see how it goes. But let me run down the scoring before we uh, sign off tonight. Uh, for the papermakers, Veith was 17, 9 in the second half. Uh, Mikey Wilds with 9. Myers with 13. How about Nathan Wilds, 18 points all in the second half. Asman with 4. Pendleton with 4. Uh, as for the Cardinals, Strider with three, Blank with nine, uh, Dalton with 24, 17 coming in the second half, Eli Bratz with one, Barfneck with four, Johnson with eight, and Will Bratz with four. With the victory, Kimberly improves to 10 and five on the season, eight and four in league play. 
Fond du Lac uh, ranked sixth in Division One. The Cardinals now 14 and four overall, 10 and two in league play. And again, uh, Kimberly now winners uh, six of its last seven games. Up next for uh, the Papermakers, uh, they got West Alice Hale. Is that tomorrow night already? That is a non-conference matchup, part of the Warhawk Invitational at Germantown. Tip-off is set for 5.30 p.m., so no rest for the Papermakers. As for the Cardinals, uh, home against Appleton, uh, Appleton East on Tuesday. That's a Fox Valley Association matchup. Tip-off is set for 7.30 p.m. As for us, again, Tuesday night, we'll be back at it. Bay Conference game. Boys basketball, second-ranked Xavier hosts West, West of Pier. Both teams chasing that Bay Conference League championship. Live coverage from Torchy Clark Gym. We'll tip off at approximately 7.15 p.m. And again, you can access our previous Game of the Week live streams on our USA Today Network Wisconsin websites. Just go to the sports section and scroll down until you see the Watch Our Varsity Game of the Week prep live streams link. Once again, thanks to our sponsors. Cellcom, remember, get $500 when activating a new smartphone line, plus make the switch to Cellcom and get up to an additional $650 per line. Visit cellcom.com slash save for details and Cooney's Embroidery and sportswear, they have the skills and experience to customize your apparel. And spread the word about your organization. Contact them today, 920-7310-922, or send them an email at Cooney, C-O-O-N-E-Y-S-0922 at sbcglobal.net. So for Ricardo, for Rosie, our secret weapon, and uh, the crew with USA Today Network Wisconsin, I'm Brett Christofferson signing off from Jack Whippet Court. Here at Kimberly High School, once again, the final score tonight. Kimberly 65, Fond du Lac 53. Thanks for watching, everybody.